Live from Waterford and on Garvin, this is Waterford at One. Good afternoon, I'm Sinead O'Hare. In today's top stories, guarded checkpoints are in operation in Waterford and across the country as new COVID-19 restrictions come into effect. Waterford continues to have one of the lowest incidence rates of COVID-19 in the country. 5.1 million euro in funding has been allocated for the Technological University of the South East and in sport, Waterford County Board Executive is to meet tonight to discuss the controversy surrounding Dungarvan GAA. Gardaí are urging people to consider whether their journeys are essential over the coming weeks. 132 checkpoints are in place nationwide in response to the country moving to level 3 restrictions. No social or family gatherings should take place, but there are exemptions for weddings and funerals where 25 people can attend. Motorists were stopped at early morning checkpoints nationwide, including on major routes in Waterford, causing tailbacks. Inspector Gavin Hegarty from Waterford Garda Station spoke to Aoife Kearns at a checkpoint point near Carriganore in Waterford. I suppose for Waterford we've got we have four checkpoints in around the city here but we also have checkpoints in around uh, the county as far as Yall Bridge um, up in Ballyduff uh, and up in the near Carrick and Shore and, and the, the extremities of the county near the borders and the entrance points into Waterford and I suppose the exit points of Waterford as well and uh, one of this checkpoint that you see behind me um, is covering, I suppose, people who are coming coming over the bridge here if they're heading in towards Waterford from, we say, South Kilkenny or Wexford or South Tipperary. A TD has called Leo Varadkar Trump-like for his response to Neffet's request to move to Level 5 restrictions. It's after the Tónishta told his parliamentary party that a move to Level 5 couldn't be ruled out in future. Our political correspondent Sean Defoe reports. The dust is settling after the major scrap between government and Neffet earlier this week and there's no doubt the relationship has been damaged. What still has to be established is just how badly. Neffet usually gives a press conference on Wednesday so we may hear Dr Tony Holohan's take on events for the first time this evening, while Leo Varadkar is also to face questions later when the government launches a new climate action bill. But in the Dáil earlier, the Tánaiste response has been criticised by independent TD Thomas Pringle. The Trump-like reaction of the Tánaiste, who rubbish the news when he gets it first and then actually tells his party, knowing full well that it will be widely circulated, that it's going to happen anyway. At leaders' questions, political parties starting to move on to other issues that COVID has thrown up, Sinn Féin asking about disability services and the Social Democrats about international travel, while the Taoiseach answer questions from Labour's Alan Kelly about getting other health services fully operational. No one's denying the reality of the impact of COVID on non-COVID care. And that what we're trying to do right now is manage COVID and resume services. The Taoiseach spoke with Dr Tony Holohan this morning and the rebuilding of that relationship will now become a priority. Sean Defoe, Leinster House. The owner of a Waterford bar and off-licence says he turned away a customer in recent weeks who tried to buy hundreds of euro worth of drink. Off-licences could have their hours cut in a bid to tackle house parties. The government's considering the measure to stop the spread of COVID-19. Martin Colbert is from Norris's bar and off-licence. I had a guy in there two weeks ago, came into the off-licence, and he wanted to spend €500 euro on drink. And I asked him, are you having a party? And he turned around and said to me, no, no, it's not a party. We're just having a bit of a family get-together. And he didn't like it when I refused to give him the drink. I just wouldn't serve him. I didn't think it was the right thing to do. Waterford continues to have one of the lowest incidence rates of COVID-19 in the country. 36 cases were confirmed here in the two weeks ending midnight on Monday. The rate per 100,000 people is now 31. That's up slightly since yesterday when it was 29.3. The national average has also increased to 116.4. Over 60 COVID-19 cases have been identified at two nursing homes owned by the same company. It comes amid fears for other facilities around the country as COVID-19 cases continue to rise, Ben Finnegan reports. 31 cases at Kilminchy Lodge Nursing Home in Leash have been identified, as well as 30 at Brindley Manor Nursing Home in Donegal. The infections have been detected among residents and staff. The owner of both facilities, Brindley Healthcare, has said families of residents will regularly be updated on the situation situation while saying the two outbreaks are separate and not linked in any way by staff or residents transferring. Jimmy O'Dolly is the owner of Oak Lodge Nursing Home in County Cork where there hasn't been an outbreak. He says they are very worried with the rising number of cases and from now on only visits through windows will be allowed. Trying to lock down the doors pretty much 
between them, make sure they eat in their rooms again for the next few weeks and all of that. Uh, we had gradually uh, reintroduced some of that, you know, while we were maintaining a certain amount of distance. Uh, we hadn't actually allowed any external visitors into okay. the house. That will continue. On Sunday, in his letter to Health Minister Stephen Donnelly, Chief Medical Officer Dr Tony Holden raised the issue of cases within nursing homes as part of the rationale for moving the country to level 5 COVID-19 restrictions. At the time, he said there were 31 open clusters in the facilities with at least 45 cases. The owners of Waterford Centre of Music say they don't know how long they'll be able to keep going. The music school only reopened on the 14th of September. The new Level 3 COVID-19 restrictions means they're running at a fraction of their capacity. Jean and Eleanor Upton spoke to Damien Tiernan on Daisha Today, saying they were OK until yesterday. I don't know how long we can. Without the honest, group classes, yeah. 100% of our cash flow has been wiped out now. Gone. We run by terms, say we do four yeah. terms throughout the year, so like it's not that we don't have any money, you know, that has been coming in. Yeah. But we came back to massive debt from the previous lockdown. Um, so we're kind of catching up on that and we were OK, our heads we were, were above water, we yeah. were fine until yesterday. And then all of a sudden we're wiped out, like we've the stage school. Mm. We can't have adult group guitar classes, we can't have four adults with six foot perspex screens between the masks, shields, everything. We can't do that. This year's Imagine Arts Festival is being moved online. The event, which includes Waterford Writers Weekend and the John Dwyer Trad Weekend, starts on October 16th and runs until October 25th. Meanwhile, a Waterford TD hopes we'll still have a functioning arts community to help us look back at COVID-19 and make sense of it all. Marco Kozeg made the comments during a dual debate on the impact of the coronavirus on the sector and says it's not just the performers who've been impacted. All the other professions that stand behind theatre, dance or live music from sound engineers to set designers, are also at a standstill. Venues and festivals have been doing their best to push water uphill. The Imagine Arts Festival in Waterford, for example, was doing all within their power to have some live audience component in their upcoming programme. But the change this week in public health advice may well have put pay to those plans. People in Waterford are being reminded that library services are still available even though the doors are closed again. Contact and collect services are in place at seven branches across the city and county. Tracy McNeeny's executive librarian. You contact your local library, either phone your local library or email library at waterfordcouncil.ie, request the items you want and then arrange a date and time that suits you to pick up those items in your library. But remember, you can request items online at waterfordlibraries.ie using your library card and pin and once those items are ready for pickup you can contact your library to arrange a date and time that suits you to pick up those items. That means our national request system is still in operation so if you have access to over 17 million items all for free through your local library service. 5.1 5.1 million euro in funding has been allocated for the Technological University of the Southeast. The money's to help in their progression towards TU status. It's part of a 34 million euro fund announced today. It was revealed two weeks ago that Waterford IT and IT Carlo plan to apply to the minister in late spring or early summer next year for an order to establish the university. Today's funding has been welcomed by Waterford Finnegal Senator John Cummins and his party colleague Deputy John Paul Phelan from Kilkenny. <laughs> Sports News on WLR. With Virgin Media Waterford. Want super fast broadband today? Drop into Virgin Media Georgia Street and take it home with you. Easy as that. Starting with Gaelic Games, where a full meeting of the Management Executive of Waterford County Board will take place tonight. The online meeting is to discuss Saturday's intermediate football final between Dungarvan and Kale. It emerged that Dungarvan Dungarvan fielded a player who was awaiting the results of a COVID-19 test, and that player has since tested positive. An online meeting of Waterford CCC was held last night, and it was agreed, following advice from Crow Park, to refer the matter to a full meeting of of the Management of Waterford County Board. The GAA say they will not make any further comment until after the meeting. The Fermanagh County Board has suspended all GAA activity in the county, including inter-county training. The decision was made after a number of players within the senior football panel tested positive for COVID-19. To soccer, and although crowds will not be permitted at the RSC, Waterford will take on Shelburne this Saturday. After their defeat to Derry last week, the pressure is on for the Blues to secure a win on home soil. Brian Murphy, the Waterford FC goalkeeper and captain, told Matt Keane that the Level 3 restrictions is hard and supporters. It was great to have people in at the, the last home game but as you said it's strange times Matt I think everyone in the world is is, is struggling and, and you know obviously we're gone to level 3 now and 
Um, look, I suppose we all got to abide by the rules now and, 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 and try try stop the the trend of the last few weeks, I suppose, um, and, and keep everyone safe. You know, nobody knows how it's going to go, but hopefully, look, people can get back into some normality. Throwing is at the RSC is at five o'clock and we'll have live commentary with Ray Scott and Matt Keane thanks to McConnell's Toyota Waterford. The Republic of Ireland squad will train in Bratislava later ahead of tomorrow's Euro 2020 playoff semi-final against Slovakia. And our elect midfielder Josh Cullen was called up to Stephen Kenny's squad yesterday as a replacement for the injured Harry Archer. Sports news on WLR is thanks to Virgin Media Waterford. WLR asks you to keep Waterford safe by reducing your social contacts.